getting the real deal today. This is what I look like when I quilt. Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts and we are starting our 2022 Designer Mystery Block of the Month. And I've never done one of these, so it's gonna be really fun to put together. It's gonna be exciting. I love the colors. That's one thing that drew me to this also was the colors. I don't usually work with blue, so it gives me a chance to do that and try out new blocks and new colors, new fabrics. So it's gonna be fun. This is our, oh, I'm gonna show you the box that it came in and the finishing kit and all that. Um, this week I'm just doing the block, the first block of the month. Um, but there are blocks to finish this out also. So you'll see that in a few minutes. But anyway, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna walk you through putting this together, but in the actual pattern it shows to make these stripes vertical, and I did not like that look at all, so I'm showing you how to do these horizontal. I really think that it doesn't draw your eyes to the lines not matching up here, and I really like it. And I made a little mistake in switching up fabrics, but it turned out really pretty. I am not gonna change it for anything. It turned out really pretty. I even have enough fabric to change it. That's how much fabric they send you. You could probably get two blocks out of this, um, of the fabric they sent you. But you know what? I like it. I like the way it looks. I see it in the camera and I really like it. So I'm not changing it. But anyway, let's get uh, started doing this block. And if you are following along, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. You'll know when I put these up. Um, if you know somebody that's doing this and maybe would benefit from watching the videos and maybe wants to do the horizontal lines, you know, share this video with them. Also, tomorrow, I want to let you know too, tomorrow um, I'm halfway through Boo Crew. This is not Boo Crew, the purple is. And we are going to be, um, tomorrow we're going to be getting the third of four mystery block patterns. So expect to see uh, the third Boo Crew tomorrow. So, yay, let's get started. Okay, let's get started with our very first block in the 2022 Designer Mystery Block of the Month. I'm going to let you know this is the first Designer Mystery Block of the Month I've ever done. I'm excited. I don't usually work with these types of colors, so I'm excited about that too. I really, really do like these colors. This first pattern is Sand Dollar by Camille Roskelly, who designed the fabrics. And this is not a free pattern, so I'm not gonna show you the pattern, but I'm gonna walk through putting it together. Inside our box is, this was the first month we got that. It came with this, but in the future, I'll only get these blocks. This is the finishing kit for this quilt. And you can see here that there are some like log cabin type blocks and Ohio star blocks here to finish it off. And then it shows you where all the blocks you're going to make are going to go. So this will take the over, this will be over the course of a year that we're going to be doing this. So each month we're going to get a block to do. So block one is going to end up up here. We got these alpha bitties, which I have used to put when I cut the first block out. And I will use it when I cut out all the pieces for the finishing parts of this quilt. And we got all these fabrics for the finishing of this quilt. They're all different sizes depending on what you're going to need to make all the finishing blocks also. So yeah, super pretty fabrics. But anyway, I will make a separate video when I get these cut and I start doing these finishing blocks. Um, but for today, we're just going to do block number one, which is the sand dollar block. So I'm going to set this aside. And I have links down below for these fabrics. If you like these fabrics, um, if I find this block, I'll link it. If I find the mystery box, I'll link that also. I don't know that it's available anymore, but if it is, I will certainly put a link down there. But for sure, the fabrics will be down there, if you like the fabrics. So these cuts, um, these are the leftover fabrics. And these cuts, I've already done because they're squares and rectangles. 
so not too hard. Here's our background pieces. So we've got A, B, C, and D. And you can see where these are going to be. Like this B is going to be in the middle. The A's are going to be in the corners. The C and the D are going to be these here next to the center block. E is obviously these green ones. And then F and G are these flying geese here. So what I have done is, if you can see, even in her pattern, her line, she went vertical and her lines don't match up. And I don't particularly like that look. So I cut my lines horizontal. So this F is going to be this bottom flying goose right here. And you can see her lines go this way, mine are going to go this way. And when I do this flying goose right here, I'm going to make sure that my lines are going to be horizontal when I put those squares on. So if you want yours to be that way, then um, follow along with me here and I'll show you how to do that. So there's all my cuts. Like I said, squares and triangles, not too hard. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is take our A piece and our C piece. I'm going to put these aside here. And we're going to cut these on the diagonal. So we will end up with four A's and eight C's. So let's get that done real quick. And I need a different... Just cut from corner to corner. And we'll end up with four triangles. And then the same thing for the C's. And I don't need my big one. We're going to cut those on the diagonal also. Okay, I have my eight of the C's and my four of the A's. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting together our corners here. So we cut these and we cut these. Okay, well mine's going to look a little different. I picked the wrong blue for C's and D's. So my C's are going to be the dark blue and in here is going to be light blue. So mine's just going to be a little different. It's going to be fine in the end because it's going to be really pretty. So to make our corner, I've already got one done here. We're going to need our A, C, and E pieces. The A's are going to be trimmed, like I showed you, and the E is going to be, or the C is going to be trimmed. So the A is going to be trimmed in, on the diagonal, like I showed you, and the C is going to be trimmed on the diagonal, like I showed you. And then we've got our E square here. So you can see how these pieces work. And then we're going to take our E and our C's and we want to line these up so that we end up with this diagonal right here. So let's put our pieces together and you want to line up this 90 degree right here. Pin the side you're going to sew and then iron towards the blue. Okay, iron towards that blue. Come back here, line it back up, and now we'll put this onto this side here, the blue onto the green right here, and line up that 90 degree corner. Pin the side you're going to sew, 
and then come back and iron it towards that blue piece. And there we've got our diagonal. I'm going to trim my tail. And we are going to take our white A piece that we've cut and it's going to fit right there to make that corner. So right sides together, line it up, pin the side you're going to sew, and then when we get done sewing this we are going to iron it towards this white corner. And iron towards the white corner. Trim our tails off. And we've got ourselves another corner. So we just need to make two more of those. Okay, I got my corners finished up. They turned out really nice. Pretty easy to put together. So I'm going to set those aside and next we're going to go to our flying goose unit which is two of them. We're going to do two of them but the first one we're going to do is this top one with these corner stripes. So I'm going to show you how I get my corner stripes to be horizontal because I don't like this vertical look. I don't like that it doesn't line up. So I'm putting mine horizontal. So you need your D and your G, which this is your D, the blue, and the stripe is your G. And you're going to take your four G pieces and you will mark them on the diagonal. But four of them will be from the bottom left to the top right with your fabric lane vertical towards you. Don't forget that. Fabric lane vertical towards you. Mark the back of it. Four of them bottom left to top right and four of them bottom right to top left so that when we get them onto the base of our flying goose unit, when we turn them, they will be horizontal. So you can't just do one of the, you can't just do from one way because if you take this and put it on this side, it's going to end up vertical. So you need four of them to be marked this way and four this way. So let's start putting this together. Start with the left one. Line up your corners. Line up the horizontal line with the corner down there. And we are going to sew on this line. Then we're going to trim a quarter of an inch from that seam. And then we are going to iron towards the blue. Okay, we are going to take our ruler, we're going to put our quarter of an inch seam or mark on our seam and then we're going to trim a quarter of an inch away from that. So we're going to cut that corner off and we're going to come over here and iron towards that striped corner. Look at that, I got a horizontal, I got a horizontal stripe. I'm going to take one of the other ones here, make sure that it goes from top left to bottom right. It's crossing over our other one and we're going to do the same thing. Sew along that line, trim a quarter of an inch from our seam and iron towards the striped corner. And there's our finished flying goose. Let's put it over here, I think you can see it better. Finished flying goose. And now we're going to make four more of these. So the takeaway from this is to have four of your striped squares marked for, on the diagonal from left, bottom left to top right and four marked from bottom right to top left if you want your stripes to turn out horizontal. So I'm going to get three more of these made. Okay, I got my four flying geese units done with my horizontal stripes. That turned out really nice. I really like it like that. So I have four of those. I'm going to set those with my corners. And the next thing we want to do is take F and H. And with F, this is going to be the base of our other flying goose. Let me show you that. We're working on this one right here. So, we want 
What I wanted was my horizontal lines because these are going to be next to each other, kind of like that. So I cut my longer edge on the horizontal part of these lines. So F, we're going to need H, but we're only going to need eight of them. You're going to mark the back's diagonal, and I did all 12 because we'll need it for the next one too, but I only need eight right now. These are going to be much easier. You don't need to figure out how to mark that diagonal because this is not a directional fabric. So it's going to be just like the other one where we're going to put our two corners on two squares, right sides together, sew along the line, trim a quarter of an inch, and iron towards the corner. So I'm going to get these done and we'll have four of these in the end also. Okay, I got my next four flying geese done and you can see that my lines were horizontal. Um, that was the easier flying goose to do to make it hor make the lines horizontal. So what we want to do next is put these two together to form that inside block. So we want both of our points pointing down and then we're just going to put it together like this. Line up the edges. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch and we are going to iron towards the flying goose that has the base stripe. So it's going to look like that. So we'll get all four of these sewn together. Points down. And you want to have those stripes next to each other. And that's why I went horizontal with those, because I didn't want to have them not, those lines not lining up. That's just a personal preference. So when I sew flying geese like this, I will sew on this side so I can see where my needle's going to land on that point so that I can get a, make sure I get a nice clean point. Okay, we're going to get these sewn and then we're going to come back and we're going to iron towards the flying goose that has the um, striped base. Okay, now we want to iron towards the striped base flying goose. Okay, so there's my four flying goose centers. They'll actually be in the block like this, pointing down. So the next thing and the last thing we want to do is take our B and our H and I have already marked the back of these if you recall and we're going to make these four pieces into corners on this block. So let put it on the upper right or upper left so you're cutting that corner off with the diagonal line and put it in the bottom right so you're cutting that corner off with the diagonal line. We can sew those two pieces on right on the line. We'll sew right on that line. We're going to trim a quarter of an inch from that line to cut this corner off. And then we're going to iron towards, actually we're going to iron this open. You want to iron this seam open. Trim your corners quarter of an inch away from that seam. And then it says to iron these open. OK, 
Okay. So we're literally going to do the exact same thing for the opposite corners. So it'll look like we'll have this white diamond in the middle. Put your corners on, sew along your line, trim a quarter of an inch from your seam, and iron your seam open. And there's our center unit. So we have all our units made to put this block together. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever made a block like, or a, uh, well, a block like this where I've ironed those seams open. So I think I like it. I like how it turned out, the seams ironed open. <clears throat> so we are going to put this together row by row. And two of our rows are going to be the corners and a flying goose unit put together like that. And then our center row is going to be with the flying goose unit. Let's just put this together how it's supposed to be. There we go. These are our rows. So you can see the block coming together with the blue, dark blues out here and the light blues in the middle. And as you can see, I did get my colors mixed up, but it still looks great. It really is pretty. So we're going to put our rows together, um, match any seams, like it looks like these seams match. Um, these points will match. And then we are going to always iron towards the flying goose unit. So if you always iron towards the flying goose unit, you will have seams that will be opposite of each other in each row. And then we can nest these seams right here. And the way we ironed everything on these seams here, they, are, they will also nest. So let's get our rows assembled. And... Nest those seams right there. This points you want to match. See the white point and the blue point, you want those to line up. So get those lined up. Nest these. So that's how we're going to put our blocks together in each row. And remember, we're always going to iron towards the flying goose unit. Okay, remember to always iron towards that flying goose unit. Okay, all my pieces have been sewn towards the flying goose. And we always want this to point towards the middle. So let's make sure we get them in the right row. Now we're going to add these three onto our rows exactly the same way as we did before. So now all we have left to do is put our rows together and all our seams are opposite of each other here so we can nest our seams nest these seams that we just did so we'll nest these two seams we just sewed and then nest our seams in the rows also and make sure your points are lined up here in the center And we will be ironing these seams towards the outside rows, so away from the center row. I love that horizontal look and that was a personal preference of mine um, because when I look at it I'm not seeing the lines trying to match up here 
So I don't really, you know, from afar, it doesn't draw my eye there. It just draws it as one, it looks like one entire piece is what it looks like. So I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out great. Even though I mixed my dark blue and my light blue up, I still think it looks really pretty. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so there you go. I wanted to show you how the first block went together. I wanted to show you how I did these horizontal blocks in case you want, or horizontal lines in case you wanted to do that also. Um, I saw in the Facebook group there were people who weren't fans of the vertical lines either. So, um, so hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell if you want to follow along on this project. And I am going to be starting to do the finishing parts of this um, quilt which is the log cabin block and the Ohio star blocks. And then also all these blocks are gonna get trims on them too. So, you know, stick around, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and you'll, you can uh, get notified when I start putting this uh, beautiful quote together. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it.